Hello everyone. Welcome to video lecture series of Computer Organization and Architecture. Today's topic is Virtual Memory. In this video, I'll be telling you what is virtual memory, what are its advantages, disadvantages, what do you understand by address space and memory space and the relationship in between the address and memory space. Let us begin. To start with, let me give you a brief about the memory hierarchy. Though I have discussed in the previous video in detail, but what happened in the memory hierarchy system, program and data are initially stored in the auxiliary memory. And from this particular memory, the portion of program or data which is being required by CPU that is brought into the main memory. So if you see the memory hierarchy, how the data movement happens actually. See, this is the virtual memory you can see. In the case of the virtual memory block, that is known as a page. You must remember it. From here, pages are copied into the main memory and the segments in the main memory means there are equally spaced segment and the segments in the main memory that is denoted as a block. Then block is being copied. One block is being copied into any one of the line of the cache depending upon the cache mapping technique. It means in the case of cache, there are lines available. So number of words, number of words in the cache line that must be same is equal to the number of words which can be stored in a block into the main memory. Then only this mapping can be done. From cache, the words are copied into the registers. In case the word is being not available in the cache. So that particular word is being transferred automatically from the main memory. Means when the word is not available in the cache, that is known as a cache miss. So in that case, that is being automatically transferred from the main memory. In case if the required data that is not available in the main memory, that is what the condition of page fold means in that particular case virtual memory directly automatically transfer that particular page. So this is how data movement happen in the memory hierarchy. Coming to the virtual memory. What is this virtual memory? What is this concept? See virtual memory this is a very very popular term you are aware with. So virtual memory does what? It's this particular concept is mainly used in the case of the large computer systems. Those large computer systems permits the users to construct and execute huge programs also. And there is an availability of huge memory space. So it seems that means that is what the concept behind. But what happened this virtual memory it actually gives the illusion to the programmers. Programmers thought that they have a very high memory, but in actual, there is a small main memory. That is why it gives an illusion to the programmer. But because of the usage of virtual memory, there is a very easy programming which creates means programmers need not to bother about the availability of the main memory, the availability of physical memory. The programmers are getting the required space and they would be able to do their programs. They would be able to execute their programs. And you must remember that this virtual memory, this is what, this is the segment of a logical memory from the physical memory, right? Means this is one particular segment. It means what? When we are talking about the virtual memory means there is a segment which you are saying logical from the physical. So definitely there must be some mechanism or some kind of relationship in between these two. So I will discuss that also. But before that let me tell you there are several advantages of virtual memory. When we are using the, when the programmers are using the virtual memory concepts, so that is going to speed in the overall program because only a smaller segment which is being required that is going to be executed. Virtual memory concept, it compensates the lacks of the lack of the physical memory. In case there is not available the physical, physical memory, the concept of the virtual memory can be utilized and the program can be executed. This is very helpful for the multi-programming environment. 
when we are talking about virtual memory when the programmers are utilizing this concept so at a single instant of time multiple applications can be run even the larger applications can be run with the help of a smaller main memory virtual memory it can be inexpensive sometimes a very negligible cost or free of cost something and it also provides the data security so these are the many advantages but it is also having cert some of the limitations or you can say the disadvantage since this is what means this is a virtual memory means sometimes it may or you can say its performance may not be same as the performance of the ram it may creates stability problem there may be sometimes more time required to switch in between the applications so switching time must may be higher and it is slower than the physical ram i have told you that its performance is not same as the ram it may take some precious storage space virtual memory right that particular storage space which it is utilizing that virtual that particular kind of space may be used to store some data for a longer time duration so these are some of the disadvantages or limitations now coming back to the concept of the virtual memory because virtual memory provides a mechanism mechanism for what for translating translating or you can say mapping program generated address into the correct main memory locations and this is done dynamically dynamically means when there is a execution of the program when execution is being done in the cpu even then this can be done so this translation or mapping that is handled automatically by the hardwares with the help of the mapping tables so as i have told you that there is a translation or mapping of the address space into the memory space you can see over here right means virtual address is mapped with the physical address so here you can see multiple terms let me explain you one by one address space this is in general denoted by capital m address which is used by the programmer that is known as a virtual address so programmer is using the address that is known as a virtual address and the set of such virtual address is known as a address space now coming to this memory space memory space this is denoted by capital m and the address in the main memory right that is known as a physical address this is the main memory address address in the main memory that is known as a physical address and the set of such locations in is known as a memory space right so you must be aware about the address space and memory space what happened the address space right this is the set of addresses which is being generated by the program and memory space is actually the ad, actual memory locations which are directly addressable um, for the processing so you can say so memory space is the actual main memory address in most of the computers address and memory space are identical n n m are identical but when we are talking about the concept of virtual memory then address space must be larger than the memory space means the computers with the virtual memory it means you can say n is greater than or equal to m right coming to the next let me explain you the relation between the address space and the memory space you can see a diagram is being drawn over here in this particular diagram you can see a computer with a main memory this main memory capacity is what 32k and 32k and you know that 1k is what 1024 it means 32k is what 32 into 1024 that is what 2 raised to the power 15 you can write 
and at the same time we have assumed that the computer has a auxiliary memory for storing n which is equal to 1024k words 1024k 1k is equal to 1024 so that is what 2 raised to the power 20 so from here you can say that auxiliary memory has a capacity of storing information which is equal to 32 times of the main memory right this is what 1024 this is 32k so this is equal to 32 times main memory right what happened in the case of the multi-program computer system when we are talking about the program and data transfer from to and from the auxiliary memory uh, to the main memory depending upon the requirement of the cpu that is actually being happened depending upon the requirement of cpu data is being transferred here you can see suppose the program one that is in the currently being execution so there is a program one at the same time you can say the portion of its associated data data one comma one data one comma two the portion of this particular program one program two related its related data data two comma one so what happened we have assumed that when the program one is in execution and its corresponding data is being also mentioned over here so what happened program and its related data is being copied into the main memory you can say this is program one and related data but here you can say that the associated data they are not at the adjacent positions right it's not required that the program and the related data must be stored at the adjoining locations in the memory because what happened the information is being moved in and moved out so there must be some empty space right so empty space must be available in the scattered location in the memory that is what there is no need to store the information data at the adjoining locations in the virtual memory systems programmers they must be aware they have been told in advance that they have total this much of address space for their disposal so they know in advance so in this particular example, you can observe, you can see address field of the instruction code that is of what? That is of 20 bits, right? And physical memory address that is of 15 bits, right? This is of 20 bits. This is of 15 bits. It means CPU will reference the instruction and data with 20 bit address. But the information at this address, that would be taken from the main memory. Information would be taken from the main memory because accessing the auxiliary storage to each and every time, that would be too long. So data which is being copied, that is being copied from the main memory. It means when the available data that is to be copied from auxiliary memory to the main memory, there is a requirement of a table which you can say the mapping table, how this particular mapping table can take place, how this is being done. Let me tell you that also. This is what I have discussed with you. Coming to the, this diagram, you can see this is the memory table for mapping a virtual address. As I have told you that the 20 bit, here you can see virtual address that is of 20 bits, main memory address registers that is of 15 bits, the same example which we have taken, right? So this was what 1024k, 32k, accordingly you have calculated the number of bits. It means this virtual address is being translated or mapped with the 15 bit address, right? So there is a use of this memory mapping table. With the help of this particular table, this translation is being done. And then the data is being available in the main memory from where depending upon the requirement of CPU, it can be copied. Um, it can be taken with the help of the memory buffer registers. Finally, means this is for the mapping and here finally it is available. In case the data is not available in the main memory, definitely it is to be accessed from the um, auxiliary memory, virtual memory. 
right what is this memory map, uh, mapping table so mapping table must be available then only this translation will happen then only this mapping will happen so there are two ways via which mapping table may be stored mapping table may be stored as a separate memory or it may be stored in the main memory in this particular diagram you can see the see the mapping table that is being used as a separate memory when it is being used as a separate memory means additional memory unit is being required you can see at the same time one extra memory access time is also required that is what and the second condition is memory mapping table may be a part of the main memory so the main memory part it means that will be accessed that is uh, kept in a portion of the main memory and from there it is being like uh, from there it can be accessed and the two access to the main memory are required with the program which is being running at the half speed means you must remember this mapping table it can be integrated in two ways either as a separate memory unit or as a part of the main memory unit and with the help of this memory table only this mapping can be done so you must remember in detail i'll be talking in the coming video thank you so much for watching this video